In this video, I'll talk about some specialty puzzles where you have multiple letters in one square. For example, in this puzzle, you can see here we've got under dog, where dog, all three letters are in a single square. So how do you do this if you want to do it just by hand? Well, here we've got CHY. What if I wanted to turn that into catchy? So catchy with a cat in the first square. Well, if I select this square, I can use square properties. And then there's display letters. So single letter would be the usual single letter that will appear. And that's what would be used by autofind, autofill, and automatic standard grid generation features. But if you want to make a specialty puzzle, you can put any display letters you like, which can be more than one letter. You can also use things like symbols if you want to from standard Unicode font. So if I put my cat in here, you can see I've now got cat as the solution word, and cat appears, and I've got catchy spelt out like that. If I open the clue editor, you'll see that actually it's only kept the first letter here. So this is the standard single placeholder letter that would be used for many built-in features. Uh, and you might want that in some situations to be a single letter, depending on what kind of puzzle you're making. But if you want this to actually be catchy, you can just edit it by hand. Just type in cat and got catchy. And then it's shown in red. And that's just to remind you that this is a special answer where the number of letters doesn't match the number of word of letter slots in the grid. So another kind of thing you can do is use this to make themed puzzles. So this is a, one of the example uh, crosswords where here we've got cross appearing in multiple squares. We've got a background cross picture. So here we've got cross bow and cross section, for example. So I'll do an example of how you can go about making a puzzle like this. And this use of pictures is what's called the rebus. So I'll make the puzzle first uh, and then show you how to put in the rebus. So let's say I wanted to make a cat themed puzzle where I have instead of cross, I have cat in some squares. So let's make a new puzzle. Uh, for this case, let's make an American one. So this kind of style is more popular in America. Yep, that grid will do. Use that grid pattern. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a placeholder letter for where I want my cat word to appear in a square. So let's say I want to have cat in that square, cat in that square, cat in that square, and cat in that square. So I've just used a hash here. You could use various symbols, but hash is quite a, a convenient one to use because it's clearly not going to clash with any other letters. Of course, in some cases, you might want to use some other letter. For example, if you are doing cross one, you might want to make cross be crossing with the letter X, in which case you could just use the letter X. OK, so now I'm going to try and fill this grid. And all I have to do is make a special word list which has cat replaced everywhere with the hash placeholder symbol. So to do that, I can go to the word list manager on the words menu. And now I want to make a duplicate of my word list that I want to use where I've replaced the letters in my multi-letter solution cat with the placeholder. So let's take the default word list and then go to word list, duplicate filter list. So I'm going to make a new word list, which is my special cat word list. So let's call that default hyphen cat. So that rem rem remind me this is not a standard word list. But I'm just going to replace everywhere the letters C A T with hash, my placeholder letter. So then I can make this new word list, create. And now I've got a new word list. And you can see all the words starting cat are now here at the top, starting with this. So I've got catabolic and so on. So now I can fill the grid using my new word list with hashes in, and I'll get, should end up with cat in these squares here, or rather the placeholder letter. So go to words, fill grid, and select your new customized special word list, and then you can fill the grid. 
So here I've got cattle, I've got big cat, I've got defecate. You may not want that. If you don't want it, of course, you can rebuild the grid. Um, well, for the moment, that will do. Uh, so now I've got my grid, I've got my theme squares, but I've still got hashes here. So what I want to do is change them back to cat. So the way to do that is go to edit, replace letters. So now I want to replace my hash with cat. So changing grid will, will change these in the grid. Since I currently have hashes in my answer words, I also want to change them in the answer words. So I'll keep this one checked and then do OK. So we should now see in review edit clues that I have the cat in the right place in the solution words and they're highlighted in red because they're non-standard answers. So here I've got cattle and big cat. If necessary, and you want to customize these, you can just double click and then edit the solution word here. So the punctuation or the capitalization is wrong. So that's completed the puzzle. How about doing the rebus where I have a picture? So instead of having the letters cat, when I print the solution, maybe I want to have a picture of a cat instead. So how do I do that? So let's select the four cat squares. So hold down the control key and click with the left mouse button. Control plus left mouse to select the four squares. And now I can go to square properties and I can select a background picture. So you can put a background picture in any square. So let's select this cat image. And now I've got a picture of a cat. But to get the rebus effect, I need to check this rebus answer here. I don't want this to appear in the puzzle. I want it to appear in the solution. So I should check rebus and then click OK. And we now see I have a picture of a cat in these different squares. So if I view the puzzle, it looks like a standard puzzle. But I've now got these specialty words and in the solution, I've got a picture of a cat. So let me go back to the completed puzzle, which has the clues already. Um, and I'll show you how this works if you wanted to export this to an interactive puzzle. So if you printed it, then it would just get exactly as you expect from the puzzle and solution views here, or if you saved a PDF. But if I make an interactive puzzle, so let's go to File, Web Export, Export to Files, and let's just export with standard settings. And then view the answer. I now have my interactive puzzle and I can type in our letters and answers as usual. So what happens if I want to do one of the rebus solutions? So here, this one is crossbow. So the way that the solver enters the multiple letters is by pressing the insert key, and then they can type cross in that single square. I'll press insert again to stop, and then type as normal. If this was being solved on an iPad or an Android tablet, you could do a long press to allow you to enter more than one letter in one square.